Hey guys, welcome back. So today on Modern Masters Auto, we have the Edition 507 sedan. This was originally a Canadian car, so it's a very rare and very cool Edition 507 sedan. So this car is very cool. We got a lot in store for it. It's gonna get a VRP supercharger. It's getting VRP cams. But before we can throw all this power into it, we need to button up the engine. In doing that, we're going to remove the factory head bolts and we're gonna put in head studs made from VRP. It's H13 steel, and that is stronger than the ARP counterparts for the M156. So VRP put a lot of thought into that and they wanted to make a quality product that was also good on your wallet. So let's get these head studs installed so we can make some crazy power with this Edition 507 sedan. Let's get started. All right guys, Rusty did us a favor and while I was out, he prepared this car to do this process. He removed the cams and let's just ask him, what did you do, Rusty? Well, I removed the valve covers, got those out of the way. And then when you're going back together with the valve covers, you wanna make sure you put all the bolts in, especially when you're recording on YouTube. Especially these bolts that are like in this area, that one in particular. All the bolts are in. Well, they were in, but maybe because there's a washer, a machine washer that keeps them in and it was just sitting there willy nilly. I don't know, I don't know. Could be on video, could not. I wanna check another black 507 video. But any Hoosier, what did you do, Rusty? Took all the bolts out. Valve covers. Okay. Got them all off there. Took the valve cover off. After I made the airboxes. They were in the way. Yeah. Then that got me to the cams. But before I could take those cams off, I had to remove these front cam covers, the plates. For Ooh. The barrel dot timing. Because those suckers weren't going anywhere until that was out of the way. So with that gone, I went ahead and zipped all those cam caps off and got those cams out of there. And that brings us to where we are today. Well, that was extremely boring. We're going to pull the intake manifold of this as well and kind of dissect it and see how clean it was. It has a catch can equipped, so we'll see if they did a great job of keeping the oil out of the intake. And then we got this pile of shit over here. Looks like we have the cam phasers that we're about to rebuild with our VRP cam plates. Rusty put all the bridge bolts and bridge cam bridge things in this box. We have four brand new cam phaser bolts. We have the squiggly gaskets. We have a box of black series tappets from VRP and we have our timing tools. But what I want to show you guys is come with me. Do, 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 do. This is what I want to show you. These were the original cams in this edition 507 C63. And if you can see I'd rusty mark the loaves that were just not good. If I can get the right lighting on it. Yeah look at that lobe just smushed down. Yep. Is there another one on there? Oh, these. This is pretty bad right here. Yeah, look at that. I was filing my fingernails down with this one earlier. It looks like you need to. Yeah. There it is. You can see it right there, guys. That will rip those tappets apart. And there was a couple more. Pretty much all of them were bad on that one. That cam is toast. Look at that. But yeah, look how bad these cam lubes are. But not to worry, these cams are junk. We are going to be installing some VRP performance cams. So we will not have to worry about this. All right guys, welcome back. So today we have completely let the coolant drain out, oil. There's no pressure within side of this engine. It is ready to go. We are going to pull out all of the tappets and then we can start removing the factory head bolts. We're gonna be doing these one at a time so we don't have to pull this engine apart to save the customer some money since we're already doing so much to it. But with running boost through this engine, he didn't wanna skip out on doing the head studs just in case. So we are going to do these one at a time in the same sequence as uh, you would install them from the factory. And we'll pull out the head bolt and then we'll put in the stud. We'll do everything that is involved with that, with using the right stuff and all that good stuff. Because unlike the M113K, this engine, the coolant passages go around the head bolt. Now I have an example here for you of what the head bolt looks like if it's the first generation and this is the wrong one. So if your engine has one that looks like this, 
these need pulled out right away and you need to go with the new style. But as you can see in the threads here, see how it's clean down there? That's where the threads grab. And then all this right here, this rust color and this right here is coolant. Coolant goes around these head bolts. And that's why there's a little bit of corrosion on the tops and bottoms because coolant flows through these and around. But if you have these style and you can see the style there versus this, that is the updated correct head bolt for the M156. And with that being said, and you may have noticed that I've said, and with that being said a lot, is because of Memorial Day hanging out with Duel, that's all he says. And with that being said, and with that being said, he says it out, so I picked that up. But anyway, back to M156 knowledge. Again, these are the wrong ones. And when Rusty pulls out the first one here, I'll show you guys what they look like. I usually keep a new set in stock, but it looks like we're out of the new updated sets because we've ordered so many head studs. And we really haven't used them, but this is a VRP head stud. So as you can see, it's the same height, a little taller, and then it has, you know, this nut and washer with a way better clamping force than a factory head bolt. And this is H13 steel, so this is, you know, a million times stronger than any German aluminium or, you know, whatever magnesium or weird rods they use. Because this thing's so light, so light, and this just feels like I can go beat somebody to death with it. Very nice quality. Uh, what what size is this, Rusty? So 10 millimeter puts them in. I like that better than the one that's uh, the Torx. The Torx pen. This is nice and clean looking. Look at that. It's buttery smooth. But we're about to do a bunch of stuff to this to get it to fit in that block. But all right, Rusty, go ahead and remove the first one. Again, guys, this is the one at a time method when you're on a budget. This has worked on many platforms other than this. This has even worked on high horsepower diesel trucks that switch to head studs. A lot of guys recommend this to save thousands of dollars. Especially when you have a composite head gasket, this wouldn't work. But it being a multi-layer steel head gasket, I have no worries with this ever on any platform. Rusty's car has been head studded one at a time. He's put 20,000 miles on that in the last two years. No issue. This is just a great way, budget-friendly way to update your engine to head studs. Or even the newer design head bolts. So if you have the old head bolts, we can typically do that one at a time. The only problem with that is when this cap, because the, the, what happens is it's so thin here, this pops off. And if we can't back this out, then you have to remove the heads to get the, the rest of the head bolt out. But we've had pretty good luck with pretty much all of them. It's really just about a technique and doing it correctly. And that's how we like to do it. So we're going to go in the same torque sequence and procedure as if we had the cylinder head off and we were just putting factory bolts in. So we're going to start in the middle and get this one torqued down. And the biggest thing to watch for is we're going to try to limit the amount of coolant that enters the engine as much as possible. A little dribble here and there isn't going to you know, ruin anything because we're going to be draining the oil after this a second time anyway. But the biggest thing is getting everything nice and clean and dry so that the silicone sticks. So we're going to take this top bolt out. And then I'm going to put our vacuum evacuator sucker through here and try to suck out as much coolant as possible. Because even though we did drain it and let it sit overnight and drain out all night, there's still going to be coolant in these coolant jackets. And we do not want anything leaking down into the uh, cylinder head when I take those bottom bolts out. So we're gonna try to suck that out here. And you can note how clean this engine is. Even at 100,000 miles, it literally looks brand new. And that's what we like to see. The tappets, they do not look brand new. They look like they have seen better days. You can see the wear kind of pressed in there in the center. And that's your updated head bolt, guys. All right, you can see the threads on this updated head bolt. Again, where the threads stop and this is all like open to coolant, just like the old version. And that is the difference. Yeah, so the Torx, with it taking material out of the top of the head, it makes this very weak part. But other than that, they are same, same. About the same weight, so probably same material, just better. Okay, so now I'm going to put our extractor down in the cylinder head hole where that head bolt was. And you can see it's sucking a good amount of coolant out of there, even though we already drained it. 
And now if, we, if we, somebody wouldn't do this, that coolant when putting in the new stud would be pressurized and pushed down through that through the engine. Removing all the coolant and contaminants, oil, all that stuff leaves the threading clear and clean. That way the new stud will seal in there. Nothing can get into the head gasket right now as the head gasket is still fully clamped down. Just having one bolt out of it with no pressure is not unclamping the head gasket. But with that threading being clean and free of coolant or oil, the stud will be able to go in there smoothly, tight, and seal up without any issues. Where people mistakenly do this is they either leave the reservoir pressurized and full of coolant. So the second you back this bolt out, that coolant will fill in that and can blow out the head gasket because of that pressure. With all of the pressure released and then cleaning the threads out before you put in the new stud, this will be as good as pulling the heads off and doing a new gasket. And definitely make sure you get down in there nice and deep like the whole way to the bottom because if you don't get that hole cleaned out and dry that the stub is in, we're going to spray a little brake clean in there soon just to really, really make sure it's dry. But even after you go into the cylinder head, you have to feel that this extractor goes the whole way down into the second part, past the head into the block to suck out where that stud went into the block. Okay, and another very important step you don't want to miss is getting that surface down there where the head bolt used to seat. You want to get that as clean and dry as possible. A little bit of that carbon built up there that I couldn't get off. That's not a huge deal. Dryness is really what you're looking for. You want to make sure there's no coolant on there, no oil on there. What I like to do is I'll get, I'll spray a little brake clean down in there and I'll spray some brake clean on a Q-tip and I just get my Q-tip down in there. I can just barely reach with my itty bitty little fingers and I just dry it off and make sure it's nice and dry the whole way around there. And the biggest thing is to make sure it just gets as dry as possible because with the head stud, we're going to be putting silicone on the washer and you want that silicone to be able to dry and seal up perfectly against that surface because now, since it's not one molded solid piece and you have your stud and nut on there, what can happen is the coolant can work its way up the threads there and leak into the cylinder head. So we're going to put silicone on the stud, on the bottom of the washer, top of the washer, bottom of the nut there. So that's going to be a sealed unit there at the top and no leaks. So very important that everything is dry. Just to be safe, you should bore scope the hole for the stud because see that stud there, even though we've sucked it out a bunch of times, the coolant's been drained, it keeps, keeps filling it with coolant there. And if you look real close, you can see it just trickling down inside the head here and comes down and then fills that hole back up. So I'm just gonna let that vacuum sucker in there for another 10 minutes or so, just to really let that thing rip and get it dry. We'll recheck it. As long as it's dry, we'll get that stud in there. All right, guys, so after a extensive amount of sucking, you will eventually have a dry hole. Um, so you want to make sure there's no coolant down in that hole at all whatsoever. I mean, a little bit of like moisture around there is okay, but you don't want any actual liquid in those threads. So now that that is taken care of, what we can do is we can go ahead and prep our first stud to be installed. So we're going to start off by lubricating the threads that go into the block with some ARP lube. So the thread that goes into the block is this end here that does not have a hex on it for a socket. And this is the top part that you put a nut on. So we're going to just roll this in here to apply some lube. So everything goes in there nice and smoothly. And then on the other end, we're going to go ahead and apply the silicone because it would be very difficult to do that while this is inside that cylinder head. So we're going to put our silicone on here. I like to put like just a little zigzag around entire thing and then grab a gloved hand and just smear it around so now that we have every thread siliconed on there you don't really need to like gooping off of there you just want to make sure the threads are sealed we're going to reinstall it back into the cylinder head so now we'll come back over here we're going to slide this down into the hole and i was wrong before it's actually an eight millimeter socket you need and you're just going to snug these up by hand you don't gotta crank it down super tight or anything once it hits the bottom and bottoms out just make sure it's nice and snug now grab a longer extension <clears throat> all right once you fill that bottom out just make sure it's snug you don't gotta don't force it you don't want it to be too tight so the next step is we're going to silicone the washer and keep in mind there is a top and bottom to the washers. It's kind of hard to see on camera, 
but the beveled end is the top and the straight cut end is the bottom. So we're going to apply our silicone to both sides of the washer. And this is what's going to seal the coolant from being able to leaking out through the head as well as up through the threads is why we siliconed the threads on the stud. So now that's on here. What I like to do is I like to get a nice skinny screwdriver and I'll just let this rest on the screwdriver and I'll put the screwdriver down onto the stud and just let this slide down onto the stud. Now just kind of poke it around until it reaches the bottom and bottoms out. And there you go. And now that the washer is installed, we're going to also apply a little bit of silicone to the bottom of the nut. Not a whole lot, just a little light coat in the bottom. And we're just going to place our nut in there. And once it's hand tight, we'll get the torque wrench. And if you're worried about the nut falling down into the cylinder head, um, which wouldn't be the end of the world, you just pick it up with a magnet. In the past, I've taken a little bit of silicone and put it on the top part of the nut. But I don't do it anymore because I've done so many that now my socket is packed full of silicone and it's nice and grippy and it won't drop the nuts down there anymore. So, but if you're worried about the nut falling off, just a little dot of silicone on the top and it'll hold your nut into your socket and you can place it in there. Okay, now we have our nut in there. We're going to start our first step of our three-step torque procedure. The first step is 55 Newton meters. So let's go ahead and torque that down to 55. Second stage is 110 Newton meters. And the last stage is 150 Newton meters, which is tight. So normally if you were, if you had the cylinder head off, you would put all the head bolts to, well, all the head studs to the 55 Newton meters, and then you go to the next round and do all the 110 and then all 150. But since we're doing them one at a time, you have to go through all three stages one at a time. All right, now it's just rinse and repeat. We just follow the factory torque procedure for which next one we take out, and then we keep on going until I'm out of breath from torquing these suckers. All right, moving on to the next head bolt. Ooh, man. There we go. Second head bolt removed. And does not look like we had any coolant enter the cylinder head. So everything is nice and safe. So let's go ahead and suck out that bottom section. All right, definitely still some coolant down there in those threads and the stud hole. So we're gonna let that suck out a little bit longer. I might spray a little brake clean in there to help dry it out. Let it suck for a couple minutes and we should be good to go. Okay, we have our hole nice and dry and we have our surface here for the washer nice and dry. So let's go ahead and put the next stud in. I did go ahead and silicone the threads on one end and I lubricated the threads on the other. So I'll go ahead and pop that bad boy down in there. And now we just tighten them up with our eight millimeter. Okay, nice and snug. Now we just need to silicone our washer and our nut. So here's the top of our washer right here. Nice thin coat of silicone. And the bottom. And hopefully our screwdriver will get it on there nice and even. It's a little tight. I think I'm gonna go for a different tactic on this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to get that silicone to hold our washer just like that and place it down on there. The screwdriver trick works pretty good when the engine's out of the car, but with the head still on there and doing it on the car, there's not much room for my uh, screwdriver here. So that seemed to work pretty good. All right, now we just need a torque. All right, once again, starting off at 
55 Newton meters. Then 110 Newton meters. And finally 150 Newton meters. All right, second one done. This is time consuming, you just have to be patient and just remind yourself it's still faster than having to take the entire cylinder head off, which we normally do take the cylinder head off every time, but if the customer wants to try and save some time and they're okay with, they don't want absolutely every, every single gasket refreshed, we can definitely do it this way. But this is what the head stud looks like when it's installed. And you can see the nut in there, nice layer of silicone around it. Same thing in the bottom one here, nice and seated. And probably the most important process of all of this is once you get all the head studs in here, everything's torqued down, you really want to make sure that you let the engine sit with no coolant in it and no oil in it for, we try at least, at least overnight. So at least 12 hours, 24 if you can, just let that silicone completely harden and set up. That way it doesn't get washed away by the coolant or the oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving along at the factory sequence for tightening, and then we'll use the torque specs I've been showing for the head studs. So I'm just gonna keep on plugging along, wear my arms out today. So let's just keep on trucking. All right guys, last one on this side. This one is a really tight fit. So just make sure that you don't have any lube or oil on the bottom of the stud because you're going to poke around a little bit to get it go in that hole. And you don't want to get any oil or anything on that nice clean surface. Alright guys, that is it for this side. Everything's all sealed up and just keep in mind you definitely want to let this sit at least overnight with any without any fluids in there. I am going to go ahead and move on over to the other side. I'm not going to film this side, but it is the exact same procedure. I have some guys that need to get some work done on this side of the shop and help us work on some of the air conditioning while I do this. So I'm probably going to let the camera roll a little bit, but it won't be as thorough as the other side. So. All right, guys, well, Rusty is finishing up the head studs on this. I have something cool to show you. As some of you may remember, I had a very rare set of, which is fitting because I had a very rare set of Edition 507 C63 wheels that I was selling. And I had a lot of interest, a lot of interest from YouTube, a lot of interest from Instagram, but I had a very unique situation happen where a local customer of mine and a good friend of me and Rusty's called me and he's like, hey man, I'd like to put those wheels on my C63. And special to him and special to us C63, uh, we've worked on it since he's owned it. He's owned it about two years now. The car was previously owned by Mark Martin of NASCAR? NASCAR driver, yes. NASCAR driver, so. Whoa, that's cool. I like saying it, you know, knowing too much about that, but that's still awesome. I, you know, you think race car driver owning a C63, how cool is that? And there's something else I want to show you about this car other than the wheels that I find hilarious. Very unique, hilarious, and probably the most factory weight reduction mod you can do. But let's take a look at these. What are you doing, Rusty? I'm going to show you something. What are you showing me? He keeps it in here. I think it's hilarious. No way. What do, you, what do you have there? It's a Mark Martin Ford hat. Whoa. He even signed it. Wow, look at that. He signed it and he did it with a sewing machine. And then, yeah. Wow, <laughs> that is incredible. That is incredible. Look 
at this car with these wheels. That is awesome. And we freshly powder coated these calipers. It's something we can do here, but look at that. Look, and the other ones, you know, hide the caliper, the factory C63 wheels, but these 507 ones, man, bling mother bling, son. Look at that. So the, the front tires were good as I showed in the other video. So we put some new fresh meat on the back here, but again, look at that caliper. Oh, and that's not even washed. It's this car just came in from a rain because he wanted to test out the tires in the rain. And it was rain today. We just put them on this morning. He gave us a green light, thumbs up to loving these rear tires. And just look at those wheels on the C63. I'm so glad it was someone local so we can install them ourselves and really just see the difference. What a cool car. This car was also uh, in legit street cars when he was here. Alex installed this cool phone mount. So that's actually a legit street cars installed phone mount. And look at this. And this is what I want to show you guys. Check this out. That is a mechanical seat. What the hell? So it, it can, you know, adjust back and forward electronically, but slot the slider is mechanical. How cool is that? Beautiful interior, amazing car, has VRP cams, flex fuel kit, cam phasers, black series tappets, all the good stuff, uh, all built by Modern Masters. Look at this, this car is just beautiful. Mark Martin owned 507 wheels. What a way to compliment the car and those amazing powder coated calipers done here at Modern Masters. All right guys, I hope you liked seeing those 507 wheels. That is awesome. Let's get back to Rusty on these head studs. All right guys, I'm finally on to the last head bolt. My arms are getting pretty tired. Fortunately though, I have another one of these I got to do right after this, but it's a engine full rebuild. The engine's out of the car. All the studs are already in it. So I just need to silicone them and torque them all at the same time. So it's a lot less tedious, but my, my arms are already tired. So hopefully I can get that one done today too. So let's get this last one out of here. Hole is nice and dry and clean. Okay, the last head stud nut. All the head starts are torqued down. This car is getting VRP cams and we're getting all new tappets. So before I take these tappets out and replace them with our new ones that I've had bleeding overnight, this is gonna sit overnight to let that silicone dry up. I can't stress how important that is because I, I don't even want the oil dripping off of the new tappets to risk getting on that silicone. So I'm gonna let this sit here till tomorrow and I'll continue with this and I'm gonna go ahead and do the, I don't know, million other things I need to get done around here um, while I'm waiting for that to happen. So, all right, that's all we got. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching Rusty. Very boring-like uh, swap out the head bolts for head studs. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. And as always, subscribe. With that being said, goodbye. Ciao. Oh, and uh, leave a comment about Rusty in the comments. Today, today, today. Testing, testing, testing. Hey guys, and welcome back. So today on Modern Masters Auto, we have the 507. Uh, I can't see that. Never mind. Delete that. Delete that. All right, guys. With that being said, and I and you might have noticed, I keep saying, and with that, Jesus, what in the f is going on out there? head bolts and head studs. So without further ado, I don't know why I said that. I'm gonna re-say all this right now. All right guys, I hope you liked this video. Uh, can you can you seriously keep it together? Try to. Okay. <laughs>